Welcome to my new calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel. In this video I'm going to discuss the topic of non-terminating uh, decimals and also repeating decimals. <coughs> and the first uh, uh, example that I'm going to focus on, in fact the only example, is the one which in which we have a third uh, not equal to 0 0.333 recurring. So, well, how did how did we originally get the idea behind infinite series? They don't actually exist, as I proved to you in my video called Newton and his fake infinite series. So you can actually look at that video either before you continue with this one or after you have finished uh, watching this video. But Newton took a ratio of numbers A over B plus C and performed a process whereby he measured the dividend A with parts of the divisor B plus C. So he either used B or C. And the way he would do, do it is as follows. He would say B divides A, well, divides A, A over B, which means we'll have A here plus AC over B here. And that would leave us with AC over B. And we could either stop here and say, well, this, I this here is equal to A over B uh, minus AC over B, B plus C. And we could let A equal to 3, B equal to 10, and C equal to minus 1 so that we end up with 3 over 10 minus 3 times minus 1 over 10 which is B times B plus C is 9, yes? And so <coughs> what does that give us? That gives us 3 tenths plus 1 over 30, yes? 1 over 30. And if we add these two together, what we'll end up getting is uh, 9 tenths, uh, 9 thirtieths plus 1 30 will give us 10 thirtieths, which is 1 third. Okay. So we could have done it this way here, yes? Or we could have carried on here. We could have said, well, B divides this remainder by what? AC AC over B squared, yes? In which case, if we multiply these, we'll have minus AC over B minus AC squared over B squared. And we'll have a remainder here, which is AC squared. That's 2, by the way, over B squared. So we could stop here now and say, well, a plus C, a, a over B plus C is equal to this, A over B minus AC over B squared plus AC squared over B squared times B plus C. So now we have a new representation. This was the first one, and this is the next one. So, again, if you put the values of 3, 10, and minus 1 in the respective uh, variables in this particular representation, you also end up again with one third. So, we could continue this process here ad infinitum, always noting that there will be a last term, such as this one, which will have uh, the divisor as a factor in the denominator of the last term. So generally, we can see that a pattern here is going to emerge, and that pattern that you'll see is this. A over B plus C is equal to A over B minus AC over B squared plus AC squared over B cubed minus AC cubed over B4 plus dot, 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 and in this case here, this is where academics 
fake academics, which are most academics today, got their idea of infinite series. Okay, so <coughs> by adding, by tossing away the last term, which in this particular one is this term, and in this one here is this term, by tossing away the last term, uh, which can also be written generally, by the way, as minus one to the n a over c to the n b to the n b plus c. So by tossing away this term <coughs> and adding an ellipsis, <laughs> you arrive at an infinite series. It's not really infinite. It's actually junk. But that's how <coughs> they got to have infinite series. So very well. You can see <coughs> that if you only ever consider this part without the last term, it's always an approximation, right? Because look here. This part here will give you 0 0.33, 3, right? And it won't give you the rest of the, the value of a third. And this part here will only give you 0 0.3. So, in every case, if you just toss away this very valuable last term, all you'll have is an approximation. Now, this approximation came to be known as 0 0.333 dot dot dot. What this proves is that if there is no last term, then you don't have an exact value. This here does not represent one-third it only represent, represents an approximation to one-third. Because what does the, the ellipsis mean? Do the ellipsis mean an infinite number of threes and then, and then the last term down here? Do the ellipsis mean that? That's absurd. How can you have an infinite number of terms between any of these approximations and the last term? It's just not possible. Okay, so most of the moron academics in mainstream academia uh, love to talk about infinite series and imagine that they're doing things with infinity. But the baboons don't realize that infinity is an ill-formed concept. Okay, infinity does not exist. It cannot be reified. It cannot be reified tangibly or intangibly. And so it has no place in mathematics and it has no place in rational thought. I have been publishing videos um, over the last two weeks and I shall continue to expose these myths. Uh, incidentally, Newton was to blame for the idea of infinite series because he began to use this method here which is the method of partial divisors, okay? That's what I call it. I don't think anybody else before me actually understood it. I am the first in history to give it a name, and I think I'll just call it partial divisors, okay? Measuring uh, the dividend using partial divisors. <coughs> you can watch my video called Newton and his fake infinite series to see what kind of problems you run into when you toss away the last term and what kind of restrictions you have on B and C. Uh, in particular, um, in particular, take note that when you have the last term, this is true for any values of A, B, and C, provided B plus C is not zero because anything divided by zero is meaningless. It's not undefined, it's just meaningless. And in order to learn why it's meaningless, you'll have to look at the rest of my videos because in one of the rest of my videos I explain that. And so I hope you've learned something from this little short presentation. I'm a little out of breath now, so I think this is where I'll stop. Um, this is the New Calculus Channel. I'm John Gabriel and I'll see you next time.